have a lot of young people here that, are, that have read your story. It's in our curriculum. You know, the curriculum. Did you get a curriculum? I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah I think so. Okay, so in it, you'll see your story and the stories of the other young people. Mm -hmm. And so they've read those and then they'll have some questions for you. I so, they're, so they've been getting ready because mm -hmm. um, as the youngest speaker, as you always know, you're always the youngest speaker, aren't you? I, most of the time. There's a, there's a couple of others, our little friend in India. She's like, what, eight or nine now, I guess, you know, so, nice. but. Um, so Jack is, uh, I think, just about to set up the video. Remember the video you did? Oh, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, so we're gonna set that up and then we're gonna listen to you. Okay, nice. in the Netherlands and I found a minus of Lily's plastic pickup when I was only seven years old. One of my proudest moments is that I picked up more than a hundred thousand pieces of plastic and I'm so honoured and excited at the same time to be one of, of the 100 people to have been picked for the Stone Soup for Sustainable World Life-Changing Stories of Young Heroes. And you can also find me on, on social media, so on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Have a plastic free day! We welcome you. Welcome Thank you to um, our, most of our young people are in uh, two towns in a uh, three. One is in New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is, is, a, is a community that a lot of um, offshore wind is coming. Offshore mm -hmm. wind, a uh, company from Denmark. So oh. your neighbor. And then we have young people from Newport, Rhode Island. And we have our hub for the summit on the East Coast is in Providence, Rhode Island. So it's in New England. Have you ever been to New England? I'm not sure. I haven't uh, been to America, but it's definitely on my bucket list. Oh, good. Okay, great. Well, we welcome you and we're so happy to have you with us. And it's so cool to see our t-shirt on you. I'm so happy you have it. Thank you. So. Um, and I also really love this bag. It's just so amazing. And thank you so much for putting my logo on it. I love it so much. Thank you so <laughs> You're much. Welcome. So we're ready to hear from you, Lily. Nice. And thanks so much. And I'm just so honored to be here and excited to have been one of the 100 people to have been picked for the Stone Soup for Sustainable World Life-Changing life Stories of Young Heroes. And I would like to tell you my story about how I find them and how about fun how I found a my initiative, Lily's Plastic Pickup. So it all started way back in the year of 2015, when me and my grandpa, we were just walking for, um, to get some McDonald's for lunch, when all of a sudden, we just saw so much plastic that was discarded all over the road. And this is a time they couldn't, when I couldn't really count in Dutch very well. So we decided that it would be a good idea to count all of the pieces of plastic that we found. And... This walk was at least about 15 or 10 minutes of walking, and we counted 91 pieces of plastic in that short amount of time, and that just shocked me so much. So me and my grandpa, or, or as sometimes I like to call him, my awilo, um, we started picking up the plastic, and he told me that anything, anything that falls on the ground will somehow make its way into the ocean. It might take a day, a week, a month or even a whole year, but it will still make its way into the ocean and into the plastic soup. So not chicken soup or noodle soup. It's plastic soup and that's definitely soup, the soup that no one wants to drink. 
And uh, when I sort of heard this story, I really wanted to do lots of research about it, and I did. And what I found out truly shocked me. So once people, so once someone um, th uh, discards plastic on the ground because it's made out of fossil fuels, which isn't really a natural material, it just stays there. It stays there and stays there until it reaches a point when it can't hold its physical form anymore. So it breaks down into tiny pieces called microplastic, or even smaller nanoplastic, or even smaller into picoplastic. But no one knows how small plastic can actually get because it's almost an endless cycle. And once um, all of these stages reach the ocean, lot more, um, more worse things will all start to happen. So the plankton, they start to eat, they start to eat the microplastic and because plankton, they're at, almost at the very bottom of the food chain, fish start to eat the plankton, then a larger fish, then a larger fish, until, un, until we actually eat that fish. So then that technically means that the plastic is in us. And also another fun fact about plastic is that it gives animals the illusion that it's food, so then they eat it. And when they eat it, it makes them feel full. So unfortunately, it slowly starves them to death. But remember, this isn't only fish, it's all animals, from sheep to birds, to, um, to horses, to even camels. It's affecting all animals, and that is why plastic is one of the most deadly materials ever created. And I am also a youth ambassador for the Plastic Pollution Coalition, and they taught me something that I would never, that I would almost never forget. And it was the four, the four, but now five R's, and they are recycle, renew, reuse, and refuse, and refill your reusable water bottle. And the refuse one that is incredibly important because it's to refuse single-use plastic. And it's in the name. We only use it once. So all that work that put that is going into that one tiny fork that we use for that one piece of apple pie is definitely not worth it. And I am also a youth and I am also a youth ambassador for many other projects, such as Youth Mundus. And Youth Mundus is a festival where the youth can express themselves through film, through, uh, through film, through art, through through photography, through music, through any means possible. And it was such an inspiring event, and I also hosted a panel for Amazon Watch, and it was just such a great festival. And next year, it might even be held in Los Angeles, so that's also good. And I also met Eco Shaker Giada, and um, we were supposed to do this year a big cleanup in Sardinia, but unfortunately, because of the now not so recent Corona crisis, that couldn't happen. But hopefully, next year it can. And I am also, um, um, and I was also representing Wodi uh, while I was speaking. Uh, I was also representing Wodi and Youth Mendes while I was speaking at the UN World Oceans Day, and that was also just such an inspiring event. And I have also met Jane Goodall at least three times. And and a few facts about Jane: she is such an inspiring, amazing, and just fun and just fun overall person and she also taught me something that I think all activists should remember is that even though it might seem small or something that you do that you might just think oh it's just one thing how can this change but actually you're really helping save the world and this is my and this is also what I can uh, what I can give as as my advice and it is that even though something that you do might just feel like a drop in the ocean but what will the ocean be without any drops or without any water so that just shows how empowering how empowering the youth and us can be thank you thank you so much Lily oh, you're welcome you're welcome that was really wonderful. And um, I know that we have some young people, um, Paige and Maddox, both had questions for you. Um, Jack, is it possible you could um, oh, let their video show so they could see, Lily could see who they are, please? Hello. Hi. One of the questions I had for you is after reading your story, I remember reading that you talked about how at the um, the climate debate, 
which was put together by the European pa Parliament, mm -hmm. said only three of the politicians had listened to you. I was curious that if you faced any other challenges um, sharing your story and the problems with pollution of plastic um, based off your age, because you are only 12. Uh, well, how I sort of um, cope with them is to always uh, remind myself what is uh, all of the good things that are happening with um, uh, with being an activist, like how many more um, youth are actually, or how many more people are starting to wake up and actually do something and how much more, um, and how many more um, initiatives are being created and how many more ideas are being shared with everyone. And by the way, that was a really good question. Welcome. Okay, so I have a quick question. Um, so what do you think the best way is to like reduce the amount of plastic without like other than like picking up the plastic, like being sustainable? Mm -hmm. Like what do you think the best way is for you or like for everybody that should start doing it? Well, I think is to refuse as much as possible. So if you go to a cafe or a shop is to always refuse plastic. So if you're at a restaurant, uh, you should always say no straw, please, if you're ordering, um, if you're ordering a drink, or if you're going to a supermarket, you could um, uh, you could always refuse a um, a plastic bag. But there's also this other thing that you can do to replace that is to is that there was this step by step um, thing that you could do is is to is create a t-shirt bag. So out of an old t-shirt that you um, that you could um, uh, that you um, that you don't really use anymore. You could also use that to um, as an alternative to a plastic bag. That's great. Uh, that's really good to thanks. know. Thank you. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Well, what I do is that I spread videos of positivity or what you can do to still, uh, or how you can, um, or what you can do to help the environment during quarantine. And I do still um, pick up plastic. However, because of the, uh, however, because of COVID-19, I still take a few safety precautions and that is to always use a, um, uh, one of the grabber sticks and to um, and to always ne and to never use bare hands to pick up the plastic and I also uh, every Friday I post pictures or videos about online strikes. Could you could you tell us why on Friday so that we make sure everyone here knows what's so special about Friday? Oh, um, it was about the Fridays for Future movement started by Greta Thunberg, and well, and in September and in September of two thousand um, of two thousand eighteen, I I watched a video about Greta and she was talking about uh, she was talking about all of the facts of climate change, and next generations, and the Paris Agreement. But when I saw that video, I just thought I have to support this. I have to do this. So then that very same Friday of that week, I, um, I started doing climate strikes by, um, uh, by sitting outside of the uh, Dutch parliament or sitting outside of the, um, uh, sitting outside of the, um, out of the, um, out of the government building that was, uh, that was inside, of, that was in my town. So that was uh, sort of my way of, um, of doing something special for Friday's future. A lot of a lot of our young people in different parts of the world made signs and were part of the strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are these are young people you're talking with today are the new youth delegates. So oh, that's great. Yes, yeah, so they're just learning all about all these cool things. And awesome. yes, we're going to be able tomorrow is Friday, mm -hmm. and we'll be making signs ourselves. Wow! And then we can post them so that. You can see them and maybe share that that you met some of these young people when on well, Facebook. I definitely will. <laughs> With your I'll shirt definitely on. remember that. Any other questions? There have been a couple more in the chat. So the next question is from Emily, and it is: What steps did you take to become an activist and start to bring awareness and create change? 
Well, what I started to do was after each of my pickups is that I sorted them all out, is I sorted all of the pieces of plastic that I picked up into groups. So cans go of cans and bottles go of bottles, etc. And then I take pictures of them and post them on social media. So people know how much plastic I pick up every week and almost every day. And I... Um, and also some of the ways where I do it or, and also some of the things I do is to show some of the people that I uh, that I have met and who can also share their wisdom with youth, with the youth like Jane Goodall and Greta Thunberg as an example. Is there another question Trevor? There's a there's a couple more there's about three more um so the next one is from Ariana, and she asked, are there any laws against plastic where you live in the Netherlands? Well, I, um, not really, but I do hope that in the near future that there should be, um, quite, that there should be more laws on all around the world about, pla about plastic, because that will definitely help us reduce it. And so I can keep asking these questions, but if whoever asks the question wants to, you guys can actually turn on your cameras and personally ask Lily if that's okay. I think that's a great idea. Thanks, Trevor. Um, and right hi. now we are on, yeah, Rebecca. Sorry, go ahead, Rebecca. Hi, um, so since you started at such a young age, do you think this is something you'll pursue like as a career in the future? Well, I definitely think so. I definitely think that no matter what, I will continue to um, to defend to defend the environment and always um, be able to give advice and wisdom to other um, youth activists that would like to start with protecting the environment. So after reading your story, I read that you are committed to giving the rights of women to the younger generation. So mm -hmm. what changes do you think we'll see if the younger generation has the ability to vote? I think that definitely there will be um, uh, more people that will be um, that would uh, really actually want to defend the environment or actually listen to youth if they um, if they actually if they want to defend the environment or that they will and if children uh, or if, or if all ages have the have the right to vote then that will definitely give lots more empowerment to uh, lots more empowerment to children to and just to show how powerful a child's voice can be. Okay. Paige, if you want to ask your question, you can. Um, so Maddox previously asked about how, like, challenges you faced as a youth. So I'm curious to know, like, what challenges you have faced um, just being an activist in general, uh, telling people about um, plastic and all, like, climate change and all that. Well, I have definitely um, faced lots and just so much negative comments like oh you're just a child go back to school let the adults handle this this is fake news you can't and um, why are you doing this you should be in school and there was one time that it was just really bad so it so it was on one of my strikes there was this lady on a motorcycle and then she and then she was saying that you will get a fine and then once she said that she just explained Exploded like a volcano and started saying, and just started saying, "You have, um, you have to go away. You have to leave. This is, this is illegal. You'll get a fine. This, is, um, you have to talk to your school. Why are you doing this?" Blah. So I, so I really, um, and um, and once that event happened, I, I was inspired to create the Green Heart campaign with, and for, and the Green Heart is. Um, is a human's um, is a human's bond with nature, or is the embodiment of a human's bond with nature? However, humanity has unfortunately mostly lost this bond, as everyday things seem to get in the way. But I believe that all children and all of the youth have it, but they just need to share it with the world. Sorry to hear that that happened, but it's great to see that you're still going. Thanks. So um, we're going to be transitioning now, Lily, to uh, Michelle mm -hmm. from.
Welcome. Hi. We're Thank you so much for having me. We're so happy to have you. We're having an international morning. We just had Lily Platt from the Netherlands. Yeah. And so she's now on the call to just meet you and say hi. She's 12 years old. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. And I'll send you her story. We are trying to send yeah, you. True. We're trying to send you a swag bag and a, and a t-shirt, but the, the borders in Sri Lanka are closed because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. there's a problem like that here. Yeah. <laughs> Lily was wearing her t-shirt today. It made it to the Netherlands, so we oh were- my <laughs> Oh my God, I wish I had it. <laughs> well, and, and you know my second home is Sri Lanka, so if, if not, um, um, we get it through the border. I'll, I'll be there to yeah. give it to you in person. How's that? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hope so, to see you soon. Yes, me too. We'll see. <laughs> um, so, Michelle, we just showed the video. Thank you very much for creating that. So everyone yeah. was able to hear. Um, and so if you would just share your story and how you started. And um, yeah. You know, because these young people, let me just explain, are from an area called New England. It's uh, yeah, where yeah. Boston is, right? Have you been to the U.S.? Um, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. So there, most of them are from a little town called New Bedford. Okay. okay. And and it's it's a major uh, center for this something called the blue economy. Okay. So they're coming with green and blue jobs. So okay. it's a whole new world there. Of oh. All kinds of new opportunities for young people. Yeah. Okay. And then we have some young people from Newport, Rhode Island. And then we have our team from Providence, Rhode Island at our okay. hub. And yeah, so, true. and then Trevor is in California, Southern California. Okay. And I'm stranded in Northern California. Because after Sri Lanka, I came here to work on the book. 
and okay. I, could, I couldn't leave. So, and we have <laughs> Nam Gill is in Bhutan. Oh, because okay. she got stranded in Bhutan. She went home to visit her family. And then okay, we, have, yes. we have Emily is in Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. That's so nice. Thing. <laughs> yeah. So we're all here to welcome you to the Stone Soup family. And Thank you, you so much. Yes, it's an you're honor. And we want to hear your story. So let us let us listen in. And we have young people that have questions for you after. So we'll okay. we'll give you know take 15 minutes to just share your story and what you're doing and why it's important that we have young people that are um, all working together right now. Yeah, so I'm Michelle Dilhara and I'm from Sri Lanka. Um, I'm an actress, author, climate activist uh, and the founder of the Invisible to Visible Movement. Um, so yeah, my uh, actually, my life changed when I was 15 years old um, because uh, I was actually, when, when it comes to me, I was actually um, a kind of a backward person and a very shy person and I usually don't go out with the society and I was not very social. So uh, this was one of my weak points in my life. But when I was 15, things changed. And an incident uh, that happened in a hospital changed my entire life and made me decide to uh, speak on behalf of uh, the children and people facing social invisibility because I was once a victim of social invisibility. So uh, when I was 15 years old, I was not financially stable also. So I was thinking as to how I could uh, change another person's life and how I could help another person. So uh, the only way I could do was uh, sharing my knowledge with them. So, uh, so I started teaching in three children homes when I was 15 years old. I was volunteering as, a, as an English teacher and I continued teaching uh, in children homes. And then literally, it, uh, actually, um, con I continued teaching for about nearly two years. And then I, uh, when I was like 18 years old, I then started, um, you know, volunteering in elder homes and uh, pa as partly as a meditation teacher also. And I was a volu I volunteered as a counselor uh, to these elders and spent time with them. And... Uh, Few, few few days back, few months back, I few months after that, I formed a small committee with few young children, so that uh, with the intention of actually helping uh, a few more children and few more people with their lives. But then this turned out to be, uh, and I realized that uh, uh, we could only change a few people's life uh, with this few people around me. So. When I was 20 years old, I actually uh, continued my uh, you know, volunteering in children's homes and elder homes till I was 20 years old. And when I was 20, I started my career as an actress. And um, uh, yeah, things changed after that. I, uh, I was able to, you know, uh, get to speak to more people than I was before. And um, uh, compared to before I became an actress, uh, after I became an actress, I got a lot of media space on TV channels and newspapers. And then uh, that is where I also started uh, doing my research uh, on my first book, Social Invisibility is Not Fiction, It Exists. I did this research with uh, Sri Jayavadrampura University of Sri Lanka, one of the uh, Emirates professors in Sri Jayavadrampura University, and uh, the consultant doctor, Dr. Parakrama Varnasurya. I did this research with them for four years, and uh, I released this book when I, uh, in the year 2019. So, uh, going back to when I was 20 years old, I started my career as an actress, and then with this media space I had, I thought of uh, using this media space and this media, social media platforms to talk about the issues uh, uh, faced by these children and the elders 
which is social invisibility. That's one part of uh, my research. And the other part is usually since I was an actress, since I became an actress, I started researching on uh, the other world actors and actresses. And then I came across this marvelous personality, Leonardo DiCaprio. And one of his speeches inspired me a lot. As I can remember, it was, um, it was a speech of him given in the UN. And it, he said, uh, I'll just quote his, uh, I'll just quote what he said. Uh, Honored delegates and leaders of the world, I pretend for living, but you do not. These few words actually inspired me, inspired me to talk about climate change here in Sri Lanka. So uh, then I, after hearing these words, I thought to myself, yeah, this is also an issue in Sri Lanka because <clears throat> when it comes to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is usually a very tropical country. And um, paddy, paddy is one of the main source of meal here in Sri Lanka. So the climate change is very important for this paddy production. But due to this climate change, it's still still the same. It's, it's getting worse and worse. And that's why we have to uh, speak about the climate change and how we could uh, you know, restore our earth back. So how this has affected my country is, uh, this has affected mostly to the agricultural sector because uh, here in Sri Lanka, we have two, uh, you know, uh, cultivating seasons, that's Yala and Maha. Uh, Yala comes from March to August, and Maha comes from September to February the following year. So uh, due to this climate change, everything is crop production, paddy production, everything has changed. When the crops need water, the climate changes to high temperature. And when the crop doesn't need water, it starts raining heavily. And this has destroyed so many crops and so many lives of these present farmers. So uh, as a solution, I thought of introducing this weather diary, which is part of my climate change project. Uh, so we are making preparations to visit these present families, present farmers, go village to village and explain to them about this weather diary. And, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, get to get them to know what, what the situation right now with, with this climate change and how we can minimize it. I'm, I'm focusing mainly on adaptation, mitigation, and restoration. Adaptation is how we adapt to the current climate and mitigation is um, uh, avoiding the emissions and restoration is getting back our earth to normal, to restore our earth by removing the car excess carbon dioxide. Usually, it says that uh, the carbon dioxide, the global atmospheric carbon dioxide level should be under 300 parts per million. So that's the target we should target to get it to 300, to get it under 300 parts per million. But right now, according to the statistics, it's approximately 416.13 parts per million. So it has critically gone high. So, uh, Coming back to my uh, social invisibility projects, I have been creating awareness on climate change and social invisibility um, in schools, universities, and on all my media and social platforms. But I, and also I hope to continue creating this awareness more and more uh, because there are so many people who are not aware of the current crisis that has taken place with climate and social invisibility. So, uh, as an actress, since I became an actress, since, tw uh, since I was 20 years old, I've been, uh, say, I mean, I've been separating 60%. I've been using 60% of my income on all my social work. Um, so apart from the climate change and social invisibility programs, I've uh, helped many schools. Uh, I've helped to build many computer labs in schools, plus, um, you know, provided uh, needed needed stuff to uh, elder homes and children homes and helped schools with uh, their sports goods i've been doing all my uh, you know social work with the 60% of income that i earn <coughs> so 
apart from that uh, i i received the asia inspiration award uh, in south asian youth summit in 2018 for the contribution of for the contribution towards social invisibility and in 2019 i received the national youth titan award for my book social invisibility is not fiction it exists and for my theory theory of alternative social cognitive uh, this award was received uh, i received this award in india at the world youth summit held in new delhi and um, uh, i have mentioned and i have mentioned 10 implementations in my book uh the book is currently on amazon uh, you can check it on amazon and um, i've i've actually imp- started implementing two implementations the first one is for children facing language barrier so children who are facing language barrier are also victims of social invisibility so i've been able to give 1000 free english scholarships to them uh which is being continued till now and as a second implementation uh, i opened an elderly community center um, in the area called divlapati in sri lanka for all the retired elders to come into one place and to build their broken networks with the current society so projects with uh, with regard to climate change i have been um, uh, organizing several projects with young children um this is actually all the all these projects are coming under the movement that i Uh, initiated in 2018 uh, the invisible to visible movement so these projects all are coming under this movement and for climate change we have been uh, organizing so many beach cleanups and street cleanups and uh, we have planted 1000 trees in katana district of sri lanka and recently we had a, a massive campaign <coughs> massive project organized with the nurses union in sri lanka there are Twen- nearly 25000 registered nurses here in sri lanka so for the nurses day uh, we organized a project to plant one tree in every hospital in sri lanka so this was successfully organized and successfully completed and um, uh, the current uh, project that we are planning on doing is the weather diary introducing the weather diary so um, this is actually the story of me and uh, as an actor as i hope to create more awareness in my capacity uh, in schools universities and on all media platforms and social platforms um and uh, yeah the, the uh, awareness programs will be with regard to climate change and um climate change and social invisibility so uh, i should actually thank stone soup stone soup for featuring my life story in the stone soup for sustainable world life changing stories of young heroes so i'm very much honored and i should thank maryam uh, for inviting me uh, to feature in this book thank you maryam uh so yeah that's the that's a little bit of my life story so uh yeah thank you michelle i really appreciate it you know we should probably tell people a little bit about your country cuz people don't know about sri lanka whenever i yeah tell people yeah I'm, this is it's beautiful sri lanka is really a beautiful country and it's a pearl of the indian ocean i must say it has a beautiful beach a beautiful ocean and actually um, like when it comes to even um, you know the hospitality and uh, you know the uh, the climate there is there is an effect with the climate change that has affected the agricultural sector but apart from that it's really a beautiful country it's a country that you everyone should visit and you know there are so many areas with different climates even now when it comes to nigambo and kalambo it's kind of uh, a bit tropical but there are some places called badul bandaravela kandy they all hill countries there is a beautiful uh, hill country with so many tea states and it's it's a country worth coming and visiting it's really beautiful 
It's one of the most biodiverse in the world. Yep. Yeah. And it says that uh, Sri Lanka is mostly known for its agricultural sector. It has the soil for agriculture. So that's why climate change has also, uh, climate change is very important for this uh, agricultural sector and for their variations. I think the currently the farmers and peasant farmers and everybody should has they with, with this climate change they have to adapt with the climate change and continue with their paddy productions and stuff but yeah Wonderful. i think um, yeah lily pat was here and uh, she, and, she left i guess <laughs> and you've also been really blessed because you have the gandhi of sri lanka is my friend dr arya ratney oh yeah yeah sarvo he, he initiated the sarvo the organization and Yes, and um, he is also a marvelous personality. I have not met in person, but I have seen his work, and his work is so much in inspiring. And there are so many people who have inspired with his work, and have started even, especially the young children who have started the initiating their uh, own projects because of this. And um, yeah, he's a marvelous personality. So we'll make, I we'll really make respect him. We'll make sure to get you introduced to him, but we have a video. We'll probably show it. Um, I'll have to send that to Jack so that all of us can. We just finished a video with him. So, oh, we're, okay. yeah, we're going to get that on TV in Sri Lanka so everyone there can see oh, it. That's great. That's, so great. Just, that's great. Just quickly, does, do we have any questions? If you want to turn on your, um, I think um, Paige had a question for you. If you want yeah. to turn on your video page so that Michelle can see you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, How are so you, Paige? I am very yeah. good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. So I had a question about, like, how you talked about being socially invisible. So how can someone yeah. who is socially invisible find their voice? Uh, that's the thing. Like, uh, usually people facing social invisibility, they don't have a way of coming out from the society and raising their voice. So I'm trying to be their voice. So that's what I'm, I did for, since I was 15 years old. I've been trying to represent them. And even, uh, you know, there are so many people coming on who are victims of social invisibility. They can be elders, they can be children, children with language barrier, disabled children. There are so many people like this uh, who come, who are victims of social invisibility. So they, the thing, the problem that has happened to them is they don't have a voice to come out and they don't have a way of speaking their problems. So what I'm trying to do is I'm always trying to be their voice. And even through the book that I, uh, you know, released, even through the book, I have mentioned few implementations and currently uh, I've implemented uh, two implementations, as I said earlier. So with these, by creating awareness and by, uh, you know, uh, using all the social and media platforms, I'm trying to uh, get their voice out so that people would know there are people like this in the society. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there another question? <coughs> Wesley has Wesley has a question. Do you want to turn your video on, sweetheart? <coughs> Wesley, are you there? I'll ask it. She might be a little shy. <laughs> oh, she, she, Wesley, she's you're muted. muted. Sorry, she's muted. Okay, she's, she she turned her video on. Oh. All right. Okay. So, hi, um, my. Hi. Yeah. My question is that will you continue yeah. being an actress and an activist in the future or will you just um, start to balance just being an actress or just an activist? Um, one thing I should say is <clears throat> by being an actress, I get a lot of media space where I can talk to millions and millions of people. So I'm always trying to, um, you know, by being an actress, I am. I'm able to speak to so many people regarding the issues. And um, I am able to touch so many hearts, so many people's hearts and so many people's, uh, I can be the voice for so many people. So um, in future, 
I hope to be an actress as well as by being an actress using this um, media space that I'm having the, to use the media space I get uh, to to influence every anyone I could and to be the voice for the voiceless. I think that's the best way I could uh, be the voice for the voiceless by being continuing being an actress and using this platform acting act uh, by using this media space and the you know publicity that I get to speak for this voiceless. Yeah. So being an actress is something that I will have to continue in order to uh, you know get the attention and to create more awareness. Thank you. So thank you, Rishi. Great question. Yeah, of course. Yes. Well, it, it's it's wonderful to um, you know hear from the young people. Um, of course, of course. They, they ask you such intimate questions. I love it. So um, <laughs> we, we're what we're doing next is we're creating a video about their voices. So um, we are going to shift gears into that now, but we really thank you for your time, Michelle, and I look forward to, to meeting you soon. Thank you so much for having me in this meeting, and thank you so much for featuring me in the Stone Soup book, and thank you so much, Marian, and thank you everybody who has joined right now and for listening to my um, little bit of my life story. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. You take care. Thank you. Thank you so much.